Okay, so whenever I'm creating a liquid drum and bass track, I usually like to begin with a chord progression, as this is gonna be what the whole track is revolved around. You might have heard some other producers say, I always begin with the kick or the drums, and if I was creating a deeper, more bass focused track, like Neurofunk or some type of deep minimal, I would probably start with that route. But every time I'm producing liquid drum and bass, I find it's best for me to start with the chord progressions and all of the melodies and hooks first. I found that the reason for this is because when you have drums layered into a track, it creates a lot of rhythm and things just tend to sound good because of that. And I used to get stuck with my melodic liquid drum and bass when I was starting with the drums first and then going to the bass, etc. Now, I've found that the best technique is to create a good piece of music that consists of the chord progression, melodies, leads, hooks, etc., and then layer them into the drums and bass last. I always make sure that my liquid drum and bass sounds good musically without any drums or any bass. And that way I know when I finally do layer in my drums and my bass that it's going to sound really nice. So that being said, let's begin with this chord progression. I'm going to start by changing the BPM on this project to 174 as this is the tempo that I like to produce liquid drum and bass at. Now I'm going to open up the instrument FL Keys. It's a stock plugin on its own. It might sound a bit low quality or not the best piano, but I want to show you how powerful this can be with a good chord progression and a little bit of processing. So let's open up the piano roll and let's start creating a chord progression. Now, you're not so good at music theory yet. Don't worry about it. Okay, because with FL Studio, we have this button here on the top of the piano roll. It's called the stamp button. So if you look here in the hint panel, any button that we hover over, it'll tell you exactly what it is. So if you see that this tool right here, this button here on the top of the piano roll, this is called the stamp. And what the stamp is, is it allows you to choose different chords and it even gives you different scales to work in. So I'm gonna choose the minor harmonic scale and I'm going to click on the C4. And what this will do is this is going to give me every note in the C minor harmonic scale. So what I can do with this is I will duplicate this up an octave and also down an octave just so we have a good range here. And I'm going to push this off to the side. Now I'm going to use these keys as our guidelines, because this is essentially the only keys that we can use. Anything that's not within this range, it's, it's gonna be the wrong note in this scale. So with that being said, let's start off. I'm just gonna literally just go randomly and let's see what, what we can come up with here. So I will start with the C and I'll go up, I will hit the F and let's get a G sharp. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, it sounds good. Let's take this F and I'm gonna duplicate it down an octave. Okay, that sounds nice. Now, let's make a second note here. I'm just gonna give myself some, some room. And let's make a second note. I'll make this, take this G, we'll use a D sharp, we'll use a C. And you know what, let's take this C and let's also duplicate this down an octave. Okay, I'm liking the way this is sounding. Again, I'm just using these keys that's within the scale. As you can see, these are all notes that are in the scale, so these are the guidelines. You could literally experiment by ear, just auditioning different notes, seeing how they sound together, and you can make something really cool with this. So. Use this as a guideline. It's, uh, you know, I can't stress how awesome this is with FL. I know Ableton has this uh, and a few other dolls have this as well. Um, also, there's some cool websites uh, that you could just Google um, different types of musical scales and different keys and they'll tell you all the notes that are within it. So we're using this as a guideline and I'm gonna create here the third chord now. So I'm gonna choose, let's say I'll continue this D sharp. Let's use a G sharp and let's use, let's see here. We'll go with an octave down on the G sharp. Let's see how this sounds.
Okay, so this note isn't in the scale, but it's actually harmonizing with this chord progression. So And I really like that. So I'm going to keep that there. And let's make our last chord. Take a G, let's take a D sharp. And you know what, because we ended up using this A sharp here, I'm just going to test how it's going to sound down here. And let's get that D sharp. So this is the octave loud of uh, the octave down here. Um, now, in this case, as these chords are developing, this A sharp, it's hitting some type of harmonic here. You can clearly hear that it's harmonizing very nicely. So I'm just going to loop this. Let's see how this sounds. Okay, I think it sounds really great. Now, to make this a bit more interesting, I'm going to change the rhythm a bit. So I'll bring this first chord back as well as the second chord, and I'll extend it like this. So we can experiment. Let's see how this will sound. I'm just going to offset these a bit. I'll try like this. Okay, I really like the way that, that sounds. So now that we have a good chord progression, what I want to do is I'm going to play a top melody. So I'm going to use the notes in the scale. We can see here. So I'll actually delete these just so I don't get confused. And I'm just going to play with these keys here. Let's see what we can come up with. So I know I have the C. Okay, so these notes are sounding pretty nice. It's it's within the scale. I think I'm going to do something like this. Let's see. So I'm just playing around, seeing what type of melodies would sound good. I'm just going to keep on experimenting here. I think I like that one. I'm going to hit this D sharp. Okay, so I have an idea here. I'm going to layer. Okay, this is sounding pretty cool. Let's bring this up an octave higher. And let's see if we can hit any top notes up here.
So I think I'm going to insert just like this. Okay, so that's how we created a chord progression, added a top melody, and just added some harmonics in there to make it a bit more interesting. Again, you want to use the stamp tool or use some type of website that will give you the scales of the different keys that you want to work in. So in this case, I used the minor harmonic scale and just went for a combination of, of notes that created some cool chords within the scale. Uh, and then I just went by ear and I found some harmonics that sat nicely in this chord progression. So this will take a lot of trial and error, experiment with it, use the stamp, use the chord progression websites as your guidelines to help you get the right notes. This will take some practice for sure. But if you're able to start creating your own chord progressions, you can really create a lot of music and start creating your own samples and you can get a lot of interesting results. So let's Take this MIDI and let's record it and resample it to make it something even more interesting than it already is. Okay, so I'm going to place the pattern on the arrangement view so we can clearly see it here. Now, I want to render this down into audio, so I will right click on that channel and I will click consolidate this track from track start. Press start. Now we have this audio sample. So we can try to manipulate this and we can resample this and see how we can get something more interesting than what already is. So I'll start off by reversing it. Let's see how this sounds. That's pretty interesting. Let me slice this up and rearrange it and see what type of results that we can get here. Try to rearrange it like this. Okay, this sounds pretty interesting. I'm going to place this into the mixer and I'm going to try to run some effects through it and see if we can make it sound even better. So let me put a fruity filter and I'll set it to a low pass. So I'm turning off the high pass. I'm reducing the resonance. And now we can play with the cutoff frequency. I've put the X2 on just to make a steeper slope. Okay, this can sound cool. I'm going to also put a fruity delay three. I'll bring the time up to eight over zero. I will set the delay mode to ping pong. I'm going to make sure that the delay time is going to keep the pitch. And on the feedback, I'll set it to a high pass and I'll bring the cutoff around, say around 800 hertz. And I'll bring the wetness down just a bit. Let's see how this will sound. I'm going to play with the low pass filter with the delay. Okay, so we have some cool sounds here. I'm sure we can do some type of automation to make the sound interesting. So I'm going to set the cutoff where I want it to be.
Sounds good there. I'm going to right click, I'm going to create automation clip. And I will copy the value. And I'm going to paste it here. I'll bring it up here in the end. Let's see how this will sound. Okay, this is sounding pretty interesting. I'm going to put a fruity chorus on it. Let's see if this will make it sound any more interesting. Let's see without the filter and the delay. Okay, this is sounding pretty cool. So I will take a new pattern and let's see if we can make any other layers with the piano to make it fit with this loop that we've created so far. So now that we've created this piano loop, I'm gonna to try to make a melody to...